everybody, welcome back to another line place of mining basket after birth plus where we have two wins in a row because I'm very good and not at all bad. Especially with Apollyon, my favorite character. I bet if you look GSNG Y2XQ, I bet if you looked on average at my performance in Isaac, you would see a dip when I got into other roguelikes. Sorry, roguelites. Apparently people are very, very concerned about the taxonomical definitions of the video. How dare you call it a first-person shooter? It's a Wolfenstein-like. I've been into Hades. I've been playing a lot of Hades. It's a great game. If you like Isaac, highly recommend Hades. Some similar systems. Not one-to-one, -one, but some similar systems. Um, oh. Very interesting indeed. Oh, very interesting indeed. Thanks for the damage upgrade, dummy. <laughs> oh no, I missed out on Robo Baby 2.0. Also known as a waste of everybody's time. But uh, I think when I play other roguelikes, roguelites, whatever you want to call them, um, my brain starts to rebuild the structures associated with the roguelite pathways and channels, and it uh, pulls some neurons away from Isaac to apply them to other systems. It's a necessary evil, part of the business, it happens. All we can do is try to notice this happening, and double down on actually paying attention to what we're doing, but hey man, that's an attack that's hard to get away from. Kind of. You know what I think is, there's like a psychological difference in those games. In Isaac, if you get hit, it's pretty bad. In Hades, if you get hit, not really a big deal. If you get hit 20 times, that's where things start to get, um, you know, more dangerous. And it's not that Hades is easy. It's just, you know, the different styles. Like Isaac, in Isaac you have, you know, 2 HP. In Hades, you might have 300 HP. Just different, different strokes for different folkses. Today's a Sunday, by the way. Isaac episodes and the weeks associated with them just whipping by. Yesterday was my day off, and uh, Kate and I went snowboarding. So it was a day off, but it was also like a day on physically. <laughs> I, uh, I I think I mentioned this in the previous episode. Basically, skiing is really uncomfortable um, for me due to the, like my feet in particular the ski boots are like basically made out of concrete so snowboarding's got softer boots but was it fun yeah it was fun it was also like really hard like i'm definitely not at the point or even close to it yet where i would be like oh for my birthday i want to go snowboarding it's so much fun just ripping it up on the slopes for me i'm like i can now put on a snowboard and go down an easy hill without dying you mean without falling? I know what I said. Falling is still a, a pretty important skill in my toolbox right now. I use that when I can't stop. And I'm going too fast. <laughs> but uh, a friend of ours and his wife came down uh, for the, the day. And uh, he... Kate knows how to snowboard, but she never really learned the, the right way to do it, if that makes sense. Like, she taught herself, so... Uh, it was very helpful to have a little bit more rigid instruction. Great use of our limited HP early on here. Um, and I, by the end of the day, I definitely did not feel comfortable, but I felt better for sure. I did skateboard a little bit as a kid, but I was never very good. But I, you know, and I skated like, like on ice skates, so I sort of, I understand parts of the concept. Honestly, don't shoot the messenger. Continuum. Not really that good, in my opinion. Depends on your build, but... For now, I'd rather have plus one damage. I think most people would rather have plus one damage. I'm gonna get real controversial here. We're gonna sack our spirit heart. Not controversial at all when you saw what we got. And uh, we're gonna try to buy a battery charge to suck up dead bird as well. So the real cost for this gambit is a key. Not a big deal when you have six of them after the first floor. There is a battery charge. We could have also used a bomb to go for a spirit heart. Also advantageous. I don't see a bomb on the consumable map, but that's okay. But yeah, after the snowboarding yesterday, very sore today. 
But I think it's kind of like, you know, my, my metamorphosis into a Vancouverite. Yo, that damage stat. Plus the fire rate, dude. My metamorphosis into a Vancouverite is almost complete. All, it, all it's going to take is like one day in March. I'm going to be like, I went skiing in the morning and then I went to the beach at night. It's crazy. There's nowhere else on the planet you could accomplish this. There probably is. I bet there's got to be like in Colorado. I, be I bet you can... I mean, I'm sure there's other places, but just off the top of my head. In Colorado, I'm sure you, there's probably, you know, mountains high enough that they have snow into a little bit of the springtime. And then also areas where you could get, you go to the lake or something. Not going to the ocean, but... You know, take it from somebody, uh, I, I live in, uh, like, basically near the Pacific Ocean. All of Vancouver kind of like... It doesn't all straddle the Pacific Ocean, but it's all it's all close to some kind of body of water, more or less. Um, this is a little spooky. You don't get over it. You know, like I know some people have a dream, or at least like a like a little dream that's like I'd like to dip my toe in the Atlantic and the Pacific Ocean, or whatever. Um, or I'd like to at least see both oceans. Or maybe I'm just confusing this with the Martians from the Expanse who are obsessed with the idea of Earth's oceans anyway. The point is, you don't get over it. You never take it for granted. But at the same time, you know. If you got other beaches available, it doesn't have to be an oceanic beach. If you got a good l a lake beach, don't let me be a snob about it. You know what's funny is that, like... When I was a kid, I went to uh, Nova Scotia a few times. It's like one of Canada's most easternmost provinces. Not quite the most easternmost, and I hate that I even had to say that because people will be pedantic about it, but uh, I, I dipped my toes in the Atlantic Ocean. I was like 11. I've lived in Vancouver for seven years. I don't think I've, I've had bare feet in the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> I've been, I've gotten a lot of sea breeze on my face. There's no doubt about that. Um, but yeah, I don't believe I've I've had a a foot baptism in in both oceans yet. It's a very North American thing to say as well. Both oceans, but you know, like let's be realistic. Probably not going to be dipping a toe in the Indian Ocean anytime soon. Um, the Southern Ocean that'd be pretty cool. And by cool, I mean, like, cold as heck. Um, and the Arctic Ocean? I don't know about that. I mean, actually, I guess there's a chance if we ever went to, like... Where does the Arctic Ocean start? Like, where, where's the? what are the bounds of the Arctic Ocean? If we went to Alaska... Are we, so good. If we went to Alaska, are we on the bounds of the Arctic? I know the Bering Sea is there, but that's, like, a different, you know... It's a different body of water, right? But it's all the same way. Like, I was th thinking about this the other day. I was like, what delineates a sea? Because if you look at, like, the east of China, uh, there's the East China Sea and the South China Sea, which are both seas in the Pacific Ocean. But I'm like, what What makes them a sea instead of uh, an ocean? You know what I mean? Why are, why, does, why are they a unique part of the Pacific? I'm assuming there is a reason, and it's not just, you know, oh, thanks, NL, we didn't think about that. But I, I don't know what the reason is. You know what? This is where you pull out. Sponsored by Google Assistant. What's the difference between a sea and the ocean? Seas are smaller and less deep. But can seas be in the ocean? Whatever, dude. <laughs> a sea is defined as a portion of the ocean. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Whatever. I'm over it. Basically, the, the, the short answer is that there is no short answer. And I decided, uh, you know, just one of nature's great unanswerable questions. Fair enough. So I'm going to suck that up. And the fact that we continue to get damage upgrades for it is awesome. Um, we did go to our item room. We got uh, static tears. Everything's extremely hunky-dory yet again. I can't believe, like, this is four presses, I think, in a row. 
where we have uh, of the void, I should say. Man, this the fountain damage is, is crushing me today. Enemies are spurting all over. But uh, four uses, or three or four at least, that have given us damage. One gave us tears, I think, as well. I mean, this is a really, really good DPS run. This is your classic. I always call out runs that look good but actually suck. This is the like exact opposite right now. This run looks a little underwhelming, but is actually extremely great. Just in terms of our, you know, raw damage potential. We only have three items. That was not a good pickup there, but um, we only have three items. Uh, but the three items are all really great. <laughs> and then combined with our stats are just disgusting. So um, this, is, this is the foundation of an easily won run. So yeah, we went snowboarding yesterday. Um, it's cool. It was a lot more comfortable than skiing. I can't deny that. But it's it definitely a lot tougher to learn than skiing as well. I learned how to ski when I was 10 in like half an hour. You just, you know, if you've never been skiing, basically, here's there's you have a gas pedal and a brake pedal is more or less the way it works. Everybody makes fun of it, but it, it is the South Park thing. It's the pizza and the french fry. It's all about just moderating your speed at, at a novice level, at least. So how do you do it? Well, if you want to go fast, uh, faster, I should say, you point your skis straight. If you want to slow down, you create a little pizza wedge by... Uh, Keeping the tips of your skis together, but creating like a little snow plow out the back by moving, you know, your heels further apart. It's easy. Any any child can learn it in... Well, I don't want to say any, but you know what I mean when I say that. I think we just want to suck this up, dude. Uh, <laughs> we also... We got a luck upgrade, and then also... I forgot that that's an active item, so fair enough. Um... Still really good, though. Snowboarding, much tougher. I think it's, you know, in, in skiing, you're always looking where you're going. So it's very easy to just be like, speed up, slow down, speed up, slow down. And you'd make it to the bottom of the mountain. If you want to get more advanced, which I never have, you can do the, you know, instead of doing pizza french fry and ruining the snow for everybody else. You do, uh, you know, like the little parallel turns, but whatever, you know. I never got to that degree. I was skiing has always been like a survival sport for me. The thrill is in making it to the bottom of the mountain. If I want to get that sense of like, you know, oh, I'm having a, a really fun time, bust out SSX Tricky. Snowboarding, it seems like, you can correct me if I'm wrong, it seems like it's early, it's hard to learn the basics of it. A lot harder. I, okay, that's not that bad, honestly. The other thing is, um, not only did I learn how to ski when I was 10, I skied once when I was 10, once when I was 12, and then not again until I was like 27, and I remembered everything. That's how easy it is. <laughs> it's not a... It, I don't, I'm not even going to say it's like riding a bike. I think it was literally just, you know, my brain was like, all right, pizza french fry. Turns out that still works. I will say, like... I like being an adult, um, almost all the time, probably more than most adults do. But one of the very few times I'm jealous of children um, is when I'm doing some kind of like winter sport. Because, uh, to be fair, I'm just jealous of people who weigh less as well. But there's just like a physics problem. You know, I, I weigh roughly 200 pounds. Apply that to a waxed, smooth board going downhill at even like a five degree angle. And you, I pick up, sp I'm like Bowser in Mario Kart, right? We got top speed, out of control, handling, we're working on it. And acceleration, non-existent. If I ever get stuck, enjoy the spot where you're standing because you're going to be there for a while. <laughs> When I see these kids, first off, being a kid when you're doing that stuff is awesome as well. Because if you fall, you don't, like, I don't want to say, like, 100% universally you don't get hurt. But you have so much less distance to fall and you weigh so much less that, like, those combined, I remember falling as a kid on the snow. 
It's like a lantern in a pillow. It's beautiful. Falling as an adult? I feel fine. And I fell, I don't know, probably like 25 times or more yesterday. Um, but it was like every time I fell, I had to do a quick audit. I was like, did I sprain my wrist? The answer to the question, thankfully, no. Mostly, I'm just, uh, you know, legs are a little sore. Butt's a little sore. More damage yet again. I love to see it. You love to see it too, I hope. If you do, click the like button. Subscribe if you want to see more in the future. Dude, how weird would it be if we just started cutting these Isaac episodes up? Sorry, guys. Life since the adpocalypse has been real rough. We're posting 10 minutes of Isaac a day. Probably stop talking now because I think there's YouTube channels that do that. <laughs> Come back tomorrow. See what item we get from the mom fight, you fool. You don't even get it. It's going to be the Polaroid dummy. They don't even know. They lack critical information, dude. Anyway, that was my Saturday. It was it was fun. I had a good time. Then when we got home, um, I turned on the TV, watched absolutely nothing for like 45 minutes. Just luxuriating in not being moving. You know? My... I, I think I could get to the point where I actually, like, am excited to snowboard and I have fun snowboarding instead of merely just trying to survive. I know that sounds like I'm a negative person. It's not the case. I understand. You know, I've gone skating for fun. I've, I've gone skateboarding, rollerblading, biking for fun. Like, I, I like that stuff. It's just that, you know, there is also, like, people laugh when I say this. Snowboarding and skiing, like I really think <sighs> I'm gonna say no for now, but I want to get it back. I really think like of any casual sport They carry the highest risk of injury and death You're relying on you here. Let me give it to you straight. Okay. Can you get into a bike accident? Of course but the thing with biking is like mountain biking different story but if you're just you know Road biking. If your legs get tired, you just stop pedaling. And then you're like, okay, big whoop, right? You're, so you're just stopped. In skiing and snowboarding, you know, gravity is, is pushing you down. If your legs get tired, that doesn't mean you stop. That's, that's not how the physics of the equation work out, you know? If your legs get tired, you actually, it's, it's a catastrophic feedback loop. If your legs get tired, you lose the ability to slow down, which is much worse than losing the ability to speed up. <laughs> on top of that, it takes place on a mountain. This is very nice and also extre extremely important for us. This is a little spooky, I'll admit. But I think Maw of the Void makes it worth it. A lot of items in here. This would have been a great time to have... Uh, to have uh, Void, but I think it's better this way. We just have to last six rooms or a battery charge, whatever's closest. We probably shouldn't have even done this, because there was like no risk of us being in any sort of trouble, but what's done is done. Like, I, I'm always surprised that, like... When you go to these mountains, I know it's going to sound like I'm like a, a quote-unquote nervous Nelly. That's a great item for us, brother. I'm not, like, I, I recognize that it's not like, don't go skiing, you'll die. Like, that's, that's not what I'm saying here. What I'm saying is, I'm surprised, like, more people don't die. Not only, I mean, I understand there's been high-profile deaths and, and serious injuries and stuff like that, but at the same time, you know. You're just, at any given moment, you're like one or two seconds away from falling off the side of the trail. Like, I am, I'm just surprised, because I see people driving. You know what I mean by this? Like, I, I see people when they drive, and they drive like fools all the time. Um, not everybody, but some people drive like fools all the time. Some people drive like fools now and then. If you ski or snowboard like a fool, 
You're running. You're playing a very dangerous game, I think. You're playing a game, you know, where the the cost is your own life potentially. I'm surprised I don't hear like like we're going to Whistler next week. I just want to Google something. How many people die at Whistler every year? Let's see if there's a let's see statistics. No, this I don't. I don't when is this article from? 2015. It's not a long time. Or that, that's not that far ago. I mean. So I'm hitting Whistler, typing that in. It seems like eight or nine deaths in a six-year period. To put it statistically, more people died driving to and from Whistler in that same period. Yes, okay. Let me also say, as someone who drives the Sea to Sky Highway to get to Whistler, that's because people on the Sea to Sky Highway are driving like jerks at all times. Everybody's out there in their rented, you know, Tony Stark's hatchbacks, trying to pass on a single lane road that cuts between the, the Pacific Coast Mountains and the Pacific Ocean. So, you know, I wouldn't take that necessarily as, uh, you know, driving is more dangerous than snowboard. I would take it as... Uh, <laughs> There's, there's a common element between both of those, which is uh, Vancouver uh, transportation personalities. Anyway, I'm just saying every time... It's a good thing, don't get me wrong. But every time I go, I am surprised that there's not like, hey, this spot marks the place where like somebody died here. Because it, it is dangerous. I'm sure people get injured all the time. Maybe not all the time, but you know what I mean. I'm always struck by the fact you could just... You know, sometimes the snow just pushes you in one direction. If you don't react within three or four seconds, I'm not going to say you're going to fall off the mountain, but even just falling off the trail, you know, you could land in a bunch of snow, hurt yourself. Hey, here's the thing. I'm not sure. <laughs> Some poor, like, high school students probably watching this. They got a ski trip to go on, like, next week for school. They're downright terrified. Take it from me. If I can do it and not ever even get injured, you're gonna be fine as well. Just do what they say. You, you're run, you're gonna run into more trouble if you don't do what they say. And for God's sakes, put the bar down on the chairlift. I will admit I did ride one chairlift with the bar up. But that was just because it was my first time riding the chairlift with the snowboard. And I was so paranoid that the snowboard would fall. I was willing to risk my own life falling out of the chair to not move to try to make sure the snowboard stayed up you know what i mean <laughs> i was paralyzed with fear and it was fine but it did shudder for a second and i was like this is where i die thankfully did not so life goes on don't be i mean I, that's the other thing I try to reconcile, right? Like, I'm like, this is like a multi, you know, hundred, well, probably like ten to hundred million dollar business here. They just can't afford to let people die. But I don't think that's how, <laughs> I don't think that's how that works. Like, when you're going to the pearly gates, you're like, but I died at Disney World. And they're like, oh, that'll be really bad for their public image. Go back, go back. <laughs> Mm. 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 We'll try this. Everything else, very suckable, I think. This is an easy win. I can't believe we're 24 minutes in. That's that's an early run. That is a run you can hang your hat on. Which is great. Maybe I can fit in another one tonight. I missed a little bit of time earlier today because I had to meet our old landlord uh, for a very terrible meeting. I thought the meeting was to give us our security deposit back. Instead, uh, she rubbed her finger over every surface in the uh, in our old apartment and went, eh, that's a little dusty. And I went, yeah, I don't know. I paid for professional cleaners to come through and they did. So, uh, you know, maybe you're just insane. And, uh, you know, we've lived here for five years. The fact that you expected it to be completely, literally spotless is uh, 
a sign of your own delusion. I didn't say that. All I did was kind of disinterestedly go, huh, well. And then um, I said, can I have my safety deposit back? And then, or security deposit? And she said, oh, I'm just the property manager. I still have to get it from the landlord. It'll be a couple of weeks. And I said, okay. In my head, I was screaming, why am I here then? You could have done this all without me being here. Anyway. I know you're gonna think this is a, you know, like the lady doth protest too much sort of situation. The place is freaking clean, dude. I don't like this lady, <laughs> to be honest. It's rude to say. But she looked, she opened up the oven and there was like a lit, just the slightest little patch of like some kind of stain in the oven. And it's not like, you know, a blood stain. It's just a little, like, a food stain. And she was like, well, I'm going to leave you the keys, and you can uh, clean this up and then get back to me. And I went... I, I, like, what I had said literally was, uh, I'm not going to do that, so is there any chance, you know, maybe you could just get someone to do it and take it out of the security deposit? And she said, I'll tell you what. We'll just see if anybody notices, and then if people notice, you can pay to have it cleaned from the security deposit. It's like, yeah, this sounds like a good idea. Also, get over yourself. Anyway, for now, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, click the like button. That was a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. See you.